hello and welcome to a quick demo on how to build a VM inside ONAP. So to build a VM in ONAP, you just need to go to your build menu. And one of the options that you will find is the add a new virtual server. Once you click on it, you are then taken to the option to select which location you wish to deploy this VM on. This is, of course, if your provider has multiple locations. If not, you will be given the, um, the local um, resource to deploy onto. Now, in the, in the uh, cloud locations, you can select it either straight on the map by clicking on one of the map points, and it will tell you which country and city this location is. Or you can come down here into the drop down and select the country and any of the cities on that country that are available to you and select it that way. Once you've uh, chosen which city and country you wish to deploy to, you go next and it will give you the option of which templates are available there. On this demo here, we only have a few templates on this specific location, but um, we, on app itself has uh, hundreds of templates for you to choose from. So in this case here, I'm just going to select a CentOS and once I select my, my template, I can see if there's any price associated with it. And also what is the minimum requirements for this template. Next, I select a label for my, uh, for my VM. Uh, let's say that I'm going to be this as my uh, web server and a host name. I can also enter a password for my, uh, my server. This would be uh, my root password if this is a Linux server or my administrator password if it's a, um, a Windows one, or I can just leave it blank and allow the, um, the, the system to create a password for me. So in this case, I will leave it blank. Then on next, I can then select what are the resources that I wish to uh, allocate to this VM. And uh, if your provider has uh, instance types enabled, you can either select the, the package size or you can create your own if that is an option given to you. But one thing to notice here on the instance types is that if I have an instance that is too small for, my, um, for the requirements of my template, it will not allow me to um, select it. As you can see here, for instance, on the package uh, named tiny, it tells me that there is not enough memory on this uh, package to um, for the template that I select. Therefore, I need to select uh, a larger one. Or I can go to create my own and start to, um, to select the resources that I feel that I, I needed. So I can uh, slide, the, for instance, the RAM slider up and down to the size that I require. Uh, and you will also notice that I cannot go, for instance, with the slider any lower than the minimum requirement by the template. So in this case, it's 384, so I need to go above that. So in this case here, I go for about half a gig. Uh, how many CPU cores do I want? And as I select um, these options, I will notice that the pricing per hour for my VM will change depending on how, much, how many resources I add to it. I can also select how much of the CPU I want to have priority to me, so I want to have 100% of the CPU. Uh, when it comes to the storage, I can also select um, a different data store zone. In this case, we only have one, but if your provider was to offer you multiple tiers of storage, you could select here what is the storage that you wish to utilize and the same for the swap. On the network, the same happens. I can select what, are, what is the network that I wish to utilize. In this case, I have a private or, or a public. Uh, I might, in this case, I want to utilize the primary one as the public. But later on, after I deploy the VM, I can add additional networks into additional network zones into my VM. And I can also select what is the port speed that I wish or simply um, click it to be unlimited so I can utilize the full uh, throughput of the network. Uh, next, I just have a few more options here. If I want to enable automatic backups, 
if I want the VM to build right away as soon as I click create, if I want it to boot and also if I want to enable auto scale. And once I've made my choices, I simply create, click create the virtual server. And now the, um, the, uh, the, the, the process to create this VM will start. And as you can see, it's been created successfully and it's now being built. And if I scroll down here to the activity log, I can see that it's going to build me two drives. One is going to be for the swap. The other one is going to be for the, uh, for the data. Then it's going to provision it. Then it's going to configure the OS, things like network, passwords, and then it will start it. And we can see that the tasks have now initiated. And in about a minute, this VM will be, um, will be ready to go. And there we have it. My VM is now fully built. It took um, a little less than a minute. And if I scroll down, I can see on the activity log that all the actions have been have completed successfully. Uh, I can see what is my uh, IP address that has been assigned to me. And under the login options, I can see that um, if I click on password, what has been the root password that was associated with this VM so I can log into it. And if we go up here and click on console, we can see that my VM is now ready for me to, uh, to utilize and start building my applications or my web server into it. And that's it. This is how quick and easy it is to deploy a VM into OnApp. Thank you.